Week. You're still watching Daybreak on Trust TV. Moving on to our first discussion. In 2019, like we said, we have a, a representative of the National Broadcasting Commission here with us. So uh, we'll just start with a, a brief, you know, uh, introduction. Uh, in 2019, Nigeria's National Broadcasting Commission, in pursuant to its powers under Section 2, Subsection H, of the National Broadcasting Commission published the sixth edition of the Nigerian Broadcasting Code. Now, the NBC Code, which represents the minimum standard of broadcasting in Nigeria, was published to provide regulations uh, for broadcasters and to also ensure that broadcasting plays a pivotal role in the social, cultural, technological, economic, and political lives of Nigerians. In an apparent bid to control every form of broadcast of Nigerian content and also ensure competition in the Nigerian broadcasting industry, certain provisions of the NBC code have been raised or have raised issues, especially as it relates to its legality and the practicability of the enforcement. Now, to help us understand this better, we have in the studio this morning uh, the director, uh, broadcast policy and research, Stella Erunse. You're welcome to <laughs> Daybreak you. this morning. Thank you very much. All right, so now before, uh, let's just start with this question. Why is media regulation important? Thank you. Media regulation simply means being authorized to operate. That is, a media organization needs to be authorized by the government before going into operation. It is important because media is crucial to every sector of, of a nation. When you leave the media unregulated, you are simply saying anyone can say anything, anyone can do anything, not minding what, I mean, the effect of that on the society. And in every nation, national security and public interest mm -hmm are never um, toyed with. So in order for uh, the sanity of the airwaves, you find out that most countries regulate the media. All right, now, where do we draw the line between media regulation and suppressing press freedom? Because it's a major concern. A lot of people have said that this whole idea of having a body like the NBC is to kind of stifle the, you know, the press. And the press in this instance has a responsibility of holding government accountable based mm -hmm. on the constitutional role that it's meant to play. Mm -hmm. So how, where do we, how do we strike that balance? You okay. know? There's a difference between media regulation and um, um, suppressing or censorship of the media. When you are talking about censorship, you are simply taking away the freedom of expression from individuals. You are saying nobody should say anything. See something, but don't say anything at all. But regulation is about setting standards and ensuring that in as much as you need to hold the government accountable in as much as you need to inform the public, entertain the public and educate the public. You do it according to standards. You do it in a way that will add up to the nation, to nation building, mm -hmm. instead of you know, uh, crashing the nation. We have examples in, in other places what um, media, I mean, the, the atrocities that resulted from carelessness on the part of the media. Mm -hmm. So that's just the 
essence of media revolution. Okay, so in the process of doing that, there are stakeholders who are raising concern about certain concepts, you know, that have been embedded in, say, the sixth edition of the NBC Code, where it's like embarrassing the government, you know, uh, in, in, you know, in, if you look at, you know, the interpretation of that, you know, a lot of people have said, well, it's not well defined. Uh, if you look at, you know, concepts such as, you know, uh, fairness, you know, to government and mm -hmm. all of that, it, it's, it's kind of ambiguous in some cases. And some people feel like it's subject to, you know, interpretation to whoever depend on who, you know, whichever side you, you stand from. So how do you, you know, you know reconcile um, this? Okay. You know what happens is that uh, people, when they are looking at the NBC code, um, most of the time they tend to take what suits them in from, without looking at, at it holistically, that particular section did not limit it to only the government, even individuals. So what it's simply saying is that whatever you are putting on the front burner and, and you think it's, it should be consumed by the public should be truthful, should be credible, it should be fair, and it should be balanced. That's the simple explanation of that. It's, it's, um, it wouldn't be nice for us to bring our an individual or even the government i mean to the public to to say things that are not accurate be because whatever you are saying is not just limited to our nation look at some other nations how many other nations do we see you know um talking anyhow about their government or their or other individuals when they are going to discuss issues they ensure that they have facts and figures to back up what they are saying all right uh, some people seem to think that the mp uh, the mbc restricts legitimate press coverage all in the name of you know uh, protecting national interest what's your opinion on that legitimate press coverage of issues such as politics it depends maybe security issues mm -hmm. politics and all and, and then issues. certain issues mm. are, are considered of national interest mm -hmm. yes uh, and again back to the issue of ambiguity mm -hmm. uh, some are saying how do you define national interest what is national interest maybe we should start from mm. there National interest is any issue that can um, that can impinge on the on the security of the nation. Anything that you will do that will incite people to um, that will incite to crisis. Anything that you will do that will bring the nation on its knees. That is. As far as I'm concerned, are we talking of about national, national security interest. now or national interest? You because cannot, if you if you if you take say a subject like fuel subsidy today, yes, that's a conversation of national interest. Everyone yes. is interested in knowing, you know, what's going on, yes. you know, with respect to that. Yes. So again, how do we put it in proper context when we are referring to these codes? National interest. You're talking of national interest. Yes. Yes. Well, and separate them, the national from interest, national, national security. security. Look, um, I believe that issues of national interest, if they are not properly handled, they can deteriorate into issues of um, insecurity. For instance, the fuel issue you are talking about, we must give opportunity to those who are in charge of that sector to provide reasons for the queues, the fuel queues we are experiencing now. But in an instance where we do not do that as media um, practitioners and we bring people who do not understand what is happening and they just start 
given issues based on their own imagination and then they incite people against the government, against uh, those in charge of that sector, it can result into issues of insecurity, issues of um, crisis in okay. the country. All right, let's take a look at other sections of the sixth edition of the NBC code. Um, the issue of exclusivity, you know, and monopoly in the industry is generating a lot of concern for some. Uh, some are arguing that by inserting those provisions, you are taking away the rights of parties to, you know, have contract deals, you know, freely, you know, agreements and all of that. When you say uh, a party should not, you know, have some kind of exclusive right to certain contents and all that. So how do you respond mm -hmm. to that? Um, you know, the thing about media media development is there's a dynamism that you see in it. And when you study about um, some other advanced countries, some advanced countries, you discover that there are rules that um, come to play at a certain time. And after a while, when it has operated and they find out that they it has stabilized the, um, that particular sector, it is revealed. So for this one about exclusivity, the reason why it was brought into the code is to ensure that there is the, um, the, the media players who are not as strong as the other giants that have the capital to get these programs at any time, they also are able to benefit. By the time the, they are, I mean, they sublet these um, rights to them, they can air it to their own, in their own uh, group and still make something substantial from it. So I believe that this came to be to help the industry. I mean, generally, so that they, uh, financially, it is not just a few people that will be benefiting from the adverts that can come through these, um, these big programs, you know. So okay. that, that's the essence of that. All right. Well, uh, quite interesting, really. Uh, but are you concerned about the implication of this on investments, like foreign investors? Uh, and you know the revenue that is generated in the media industry and all of that. Um, of course, I don't. Uh, I don't believe that it has it has a negative impact that much. I mean, on foreign investors. Foreign investors before this law knew the, the, their partners, those they've been partnering with. And even with this, it will still not stop them. Yeah, from, well, uh, you are now you know, saying that they do not have some exclusive rights to certain kind of contents. And by the time, for instance, they do their calculation uh, and weigh it all, and they see that, look, this law tends to uh, you know, have an impact negatively on revenue or the projections that they are likely to have in, as far as their income uh, uh, is concerned. So okay. maybe around that mm. angle. You know, like I, I said earlier, there's room for reviews. So what usually happens when a law comes into existence, there is what is called evaluation. You evaluate it. And that's why from time to time we have a code review. At least within four years, we review the code. So the essence is to evaluate the impact of the existing laws or regulations. If the, I mean, the impact is negative, when we are reviewing, I mean, the review of the code is done by the industry. 
So that will be an opportunity for industry players to come up with their reasons, the arguments why this law should be reviewed and um, it is taken out or, I mean, reflected, reviewed to reflect the desires of the players. Okay, now, um, would you say as a body that uh, you operate freely and independently? And uh, also, what protects the independence and autonomy of the NBC from either political or commercial interference? Will I say that as a body, we operate independently? We operate independently to the point that the law setting up the NBC permits the NBC to operate. What do I mean by that? For instance, in the grant of licenses, mm. the law states that the commission receives, processes applications for the grant of licenses, and then um, transmits such to the minister who takes it to the president for his approval. So to that extent, if as a commission we just say hey, you need a license, bring the application and, and give, then we will not be operating according to the law. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, the day-to-day -day running of the um, organization, the director general is in charge. Mm. All right, let, let's talk about online space. You know, okay. That's uh, also something that has generated some concern for you know the country generally in terms of censorship in terms of fake news hate speech and the likes uh, the minister of information has championed the you know uh, mandating of online broadcasters to you know get licensed before they operate uh, there are reactions to that some say that look this is all an attempt because uh, the online space is the only space where people can actually operate freely. And so others feel like this is an attempt to, you know, gag the, the media again. Mm -hmm. So that trust issue is always there. How do we deal with it? The fact is that um, social media has become a thorn in the flesh, not only in Nigeria, but even in other countries. Countries are looking for what to do to sanitize even the social media because of the very um, terrible things resulting from content that are, are disseminated through the social media. So Nigeria is not alone in this, and it is not about censorship. It's still about regulation. Take for instance um, the recent one that we had of a teenager who killed a girlfriend of his. And there's a trending uh, video on uh, Instagram where the young men were simply saying to be rich kill your girlfriend mm. for rituals. So there are a lot of horrible things happening. Um, some time ago, uh, even a research that was done by the research department of Facebook came up with the fact that Facebook, through the content it's disseminating, has caused a lot of harm to teenagers. So every country is interested in regulating the social media. So in doing today. that regulation, how much of involvement or collaboration or partnership do you have with stakeholders in the industry so that it doesn't appear like uh, decisions are made and then forced down the throat of stakeholders? Mm -hmm. How much of you know, interaction and engagement? Okay, it's in, it's in, the pro it's in progress. Right now, what uh, we are doing is to collaborate with all the stakeholders that have one thing or, to, or the other to do with the regulation of the social media. For instance, the NBC is in charge of content, regulating the content. For those who have the platform through which this um, 
um, messages are disseminated have to be involved. So um, a committee was set up initially after the, after the suspension of Twitter and it included um, NITDA, NCC, ONSA and they looked at and agreed on some issues before the ban was lifted. But right now, as a commission, we are working with, um, with those same organizations. Just recently, we went to look at the first draft of regulations, we went to consider it with uh, NITDA and then um, um, I think a representative of Bonn. That's just the first stage. But as time goes on, before the regulations, I mean, come to play, definitely all the players will be involved. Okay, now uh, can you quickly tell us about, about the digital switchover, you know, the challenges that might likely, you know, come up and also its promises? Thank you very much. The, digi the digital switchover, of course, the first one, uh, the pilot switchover, took place in JAWS in 2016. The Abuja one was done also here. And subsequently, uh, about eight states have been switched on, about um, seven states, including Abuja, making it eight, have been switched on. Um, and uh, we're working on some other states very soon. Some other states like uh, Rivers, Yobe, and, um, and Gombe, then Uyo. I think they are the next to, to be switched on. So, um, well, it's, it's not been as fast as we thought it was going to be. In because digital switchover requires a lot of money. You need to, the, the audience needs to be prepared because the, they need a set top box to be able to use the analog TV sets to receive digital signals. And you will agree that in Nigeria today, when you anything that will give somebody an additional um, uh, financial um, responsibility, they would want to resist it. But what the NBC is doing with the cooperation of the or under the leadership of the Minister of Information and Culture is to try to get the buy-in of state governments into the uh, project so that they will support their, I mean, the citizens to own their set-top boxes to uh, make it easier. Are, are you optimistic that we'll be able to meet up with the timelines that, timelines that we've set out, you know, for this complete switchover uh, in terms of the schedules? Already we've seen that it has been, you know, altered mm. and all that so are we going to meet up uh, I, I I will not sit here and say that we are going to meet up or that we are not going to meet up but I would say that as uh, funds are available the Commission is ready and we'll try our best to meet up with the timelines but if per adventure we are not able to meet up, digitization cannot go back. We have started. It's a journey that must be completed. Mm. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on Daybreak this morning and uh, sharing and giving us updates on, you know, the recent happenings uh, at the NBC. We appreciate your coming. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, we've been speaking with uh, Stella Irunse, uh, she's the Director of Broadcast Policy and Research at uh, the uh, National B uh, Broadcasting Commission. Uh, thank you again for coming. Thank you. Thank All right, you. we'll take a short breather and then when we come back, we will be taking a look at other discussions on the program.